Hello and welcome to another Tyco video. The 11th version of the software has just recently been released, so I thought we'd go ahead and put together a video going over some of the new features and enhancements that you can expect to see in this new release. The first item of interest concerns the plate solver module, which has been improved and enhanced for this release. And in fact, most of this video I will spend talking about this particular uh, module and its updates and all the other features and enhancements will each get their own uh, video to go over them in proper detail. Uh, but the other item that follows that is the alignment module. It offers a new mode of operation called WCS or World Coordinate System Alignment. And that actually ties in with the plate solver module. So I'll be going over that in more detail as well. Uh, the stretching uh, function, uh, this is a new capability to Tyco. Other astronomy programs also offer this, but this is new to Tyco. So if you're working with images that have both uh, very faint features, but also potentially a bright subject, you want to have a, the ability to uh, convey both of those at the same time. So that will get its own video and also other functionality. Uh, for example, the ability to batch edit the headers of Fitz images, uh, that's a nice new feature. So there's lots of new toys to play with in this version, and I'm excited to share all of that, uh, starting with this video and continuing with subsequent videos uh, to follow. So to go ahead and get started, let's talk about this new and enhanced plate solver module. Okay, so this is the plate solver window. And as you can see, three of the settings now offer an auto select mode of operation. And this is very nice because it takes some of the guesswork out of having to determine an optimal configuration for the plate solver. So more often than not, whenever somebody would have an image that fails to plate solve, it was because they chose a setting that was not quite optimal for the plate solver. So the idea here is that you can just choose auto select and hopefully it will choose the, again, the ideal configuration for your image. So the way this works is star extraction, for example, that used to just be standard or extended. Well, now you have an auto mode. And again, that will usually work and is recommended. So if you wanna know a little bit more about it, standard mode, you would have chosen that for images having a quote unquote reasonable number of stars and you would choose extended if your images had a few number of stars. Well, the question is what constitutes a reasonable number of stars versus what is a few number of stars? So I've looked at a large number of images and which ones plate solve better with different settings. And I've been able to dial in on a, a threshold that works well almost all the time. So if you choose auto mode, it's going to basically take that knowledge and apply it for you. So it's a very nice feature, but if you wanted to, you could still manually select, you know, manually choose standard or extended if you wanted to. Down sample factor, same thing. Uh, you have auto mode, but if you wanted to, you could manually choose uh, the down sample factor. Again, the way that works is larger size images, it would typically have a higher down sample factor. So for example, 6,000 by 6,000 pixel image, you might choose a down sample factor of four, while if you have a small 700 by 700 pixel image, you might choose a down sample factor of one. But auto mode, again, is going to apply the knowledge that I've gained looking at large sample size of images and will hopefully choose the correct setting for you. And finally, we have reference image. This is actually a new feature where it used to be that the plate solver would always choose the first image in the data set as the reference image. Well, now you have the option of auto mode, which will select the image having the best quality stars, or you could manually choose first, middle, or last image as the reference image. And a note here is that the alignment routine will also use that same uh, reference image as well. Now, another nice new feature with respect to the plate solver is the ability to conduct a batch solve of all of the images in the data set. And this is referenced by this option here. So if you uncheck solve only the reference image, then it will be forced to solve all of the images in the data set. Now the question might be, when would I choose that option versus not? Because after all, solving all of the images does add to the processing time. However, I will point out that it's usually quite efficient at batch solving. 
I've had it where it can solve up to a thousand images in under one minute. So it's very, very efficient at what it does. Uh, however, again, it still does add additional processing time. So those of you who are doing sky surveys probably will continue to choose solve only the reference image. But if you are interested in trying out some additional functionality that makes use of a plate solution attached to each image, then that is when you would want to do batch solving. For example, uh, the alignment routine now offers a new mode of operation uh, called WCS match mode. And this basically is a world coordinate system match, uh, and it makes use of the plate solution uh, on every image uh, to perform the alignment. So if you ever have issue with the conventional star match routine, then you now have a fallback option where you can try WCS match. So in fact, I've had a lot of uh, very good positive results with WCS match. It works very effectively. And it, again, it's just another option, uh, but it does require each image to be plate solved. So that would be one scenario where you might try batch solving. But again, uh, different users have different requirements. If you want speed uh, in your processing pipeline, then probably would, you would continue to have it solve only the reference image. Now, before I demonstrate the new plate solver in action, I want to go ahead and just provide a couple of tips here to help improve the odds of a successful solve. The first of which is to remove hot pixels where possible. I've talked about hot pixels before and how they can be false positives uh, as far as it relates to moving objects, but also they can be detrimental to the plate solver as they can confuse it for stars. So if possible, use a good dark frame. If you do not have a good dark frame available, then you can choose the fix hot pixel option in the calibration module. And then finally, the other tip here is when you are working with distorted images, uh, this could be a result of having a very short focal length instrument paired with a large camera sensor, then on rare occasions, but I have seen it happen, uh, on rare occasions, you may have to crop uh, the image in order for it to plate solve. Uh, again, I've looked at a large number of images and almost always I've been able to plate solve them without fail, but these two, uh, issues can come up where either you've got a lot of hot pixels or you're working with very distorted images. And so just that's something to take into account uh, to try to improve uh, your plate solving. So with that, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the new plate solve functionality. Okay, so this is just a very quick demonstration. Most of you are already familiar with how the plate solve module works, but I wanted to share an example of an image having a large number of hot pixels. So the question is, can this image be solved? So I clicked on the start button and you'll notice that uh, it is already taking longer than normal to find a solution. Usually if it does not find a solution within the first 10 seconds, that is indicative that it probably will not find one at all. However, on rare occasions, it may take up to a minute, but I also uploaded the same image to the astrometry.net website and it failed there as well. So I happen to know that it will not find a solution. So I've taken that same image and now I've cleaned it up. There are no more hot pixels. And now the question is, can it be solved this time? So I click start. And this time you'll notice that it is very quick to find a solution. So this tells us that there are two aspects to consider when using the plate solver. The first of which is that you have the proper settings. And here I made use of the auto select functionality, which worked great uh, for this exercise. And the other aspect is that the image that you provide is free of defect, that you have performed calibration and that ideally there are no hot pixels. So having done that, having considered both aspects, your chances of success for the plate solver are much improved. So that's about it for this video. I will have a few more videos coming soon to cover the other enhancements and features of this new version of Tyco. But for now, I want to thank you for watching and see you next time.